UCAT question number 276. What is the purpose of a pilgrimage? Someone who goes on a pilgrimage prays with his feet and experiences with all his senses that his entire life is one long journey to God. Saint Augustine would say, unwaveringly the church marches forward on her pilgrim way between the world's persecutions and God's consolations. In ancient Israel, people made pilgrimages to the temple in Jerusalem. Christians adopted this custom and so this developed, especially in the Middle Ages, into a, into a regular pilgrimage movement to the holy places. Above all, to Jerusalem and to the tombs of the apostles in Rome and Santiago de Compostela. Often, people went on pilgrimage so as to do penance. And sometimes their actions were affected by the false notion that one had to justify oneself before God by tormenting and punishing oneself. Today, pilgrimages are experiencing a unique revival. People are looking for the peace and the strength that come from those grace-filled localities. They are tired of going it alone. <clears throat> they want to get out of the rut of the daily routine, get rid of some ballast and start moving forward guard. Pope Benedict the 16th always encouraged people to make pilgrimages to have a God experience. Question number 277. What are the stations of the cross? Following Jesus on his way of the cross by praying and meditating on the 14 stations is a very ancient devotion in the church which is practiced especially in Lent and Holy Week. The 14 stations of the cross are 1. Jesus is condemned to death. 2. Jesus takes up his cross. 3. Jesus falls the first time. 4. Jesus meets his sorrowful mother. 5. Simon of Cyrene helps Jesus carry the cross. 6. Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. 7. Jesus falls the second time. 8. Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem. 9. Jesus falls the third time. 10. Jesus is stripped of his garments. 11. Jesus is nailed to the cross. 12. Jesus dies on the cross. 13. Jesus is taken down from the cross and presented to his sorrowful mother. 14. Jesus is buried in the tomb. Your cross. The everlasting God has in his wisdom foreseen from eternity the cross that he now presents to you as a gift from his inmost heart. This cross he now sends you, he has considered with his all-knowing eyes, understood with his divine mind, tested with his wise justice, and warmed with loving arms, and weighed with his own hands to see that it be not one inch too large and not one ounce too heavy for you. He has blessed it with his holy name, anointed it with his consolation, taken one last glance at you and your courage, and then sent it to you from heaven, a special greeting from God to you, and arms of the all-merciful love of God, says St. Francis of Sales. The Lord's cross embraces the world. 
his via crucis crosses continents and epochs in the way of the cross we cannot merely be spectators we too are involved so we must seek our place where are we says pope benedict the 16th god bless you all